Well, it would seem that spring is finally starting to arrive up here at our property in Alaska. And the chickens, well, I don't even know if the chickens knew it was winter outside with this new heated coop that they have. And the way they're acting right now is pretty much how they've been acting all winter long. And with this warm weather we're having, decided to be a great day to get the chicken coop cleaned out, which is usually, it's usually Ariel's thing. She put down some straw, wood shavings, and the linoleum floor that we put down is awesome. You can tell that it just scrapes up really easily. And I get the duty of running the compost or the chicken litter over to the compost pile, which is completely frozen. Although the coop has been great, it hasn't been absolutely perfect. You can tell here in the corner and um, up in the windows, had a lot of frost buildup. And that's from all the moisture that the chickens put off and then heating the coop and then letting it kind of drop down to freeze at night. Ended up with a lot of ice. But as of now, I haven't ran the diesel heater in a couple weeks and it's 34.7 degrees inside the coop. And the chickens themselves, they put off a lot of heat along with the sun we've been getting coming in those two big windows. And just the fact that the chicken coop is so well insulated. The chickens still haven't really been interested in going outside as of yet, but with the warm weather we're gonna start having, I'm thinking that they'll make it out there pretty soon. And the two solar panels we have are now collecting sun, finally. So at this point, we're really not having to run the generator anymore to charge up the coop. Uh, you can tell on the charge controller here, we're pulling in 115 watts, which, I mean, that's more than enough to keep our batteries topped off for us. And the chicken run has been awesome as far as clearing snow off of it. This is our old high tunnel, and we use a snow rake, and it just takes a few minutes, get the whole thing cleared off, let some sun in and the outdoor chicken run. When you come through winter and the days start getting longer, I mean, you really notice the difference. I think we're up to about 10 hours of sunlight now. And over the summer, we stocked up on chicken feed. So we bought about a year's worth while we could get it. And we keep it over here in our Connex, keeps it out of the weather, keeps the squirrels from getting to it. And one of the cool things about having snow on the ground is using the snow machine and one of our sleds to just transport stuff around the property. So we go over to the Connex, we load up everything we need to mix up a new round of chicken feed, and we haul it over to the chicken coop. And since heating the chicken coop and giving them all the extra light over the winter and with the high egg production we were getting from them, they really didn't slow down on how much food they ate over the winter. So we were pretty much feeding them kind of like a summer diet. So we went through quite a bit of food and this container we have on the front deck that we're filling up usually lasts us about a month. And their food right now consists of sunflower seed, oats, barley, whole wheat, and some milled peas. And this is what it looks like fully mixed. Sometimes we soak it with a little water for them. Sometimes we feed it to them dry. This is another bag of feed we like to buy. We usually give them this one in the winter months.
doing a wellness check on the chickens tonight. We figured this would be a good time since they are starting to settle down. The lights are off. Um, they've been kind of roosting for a while and we're just gonna look over the birds and make sure that everything looks good on them. And just check if they need their butts clean or anything. I'd say the pullets are probably yeah. good. Look how small that chicken is next time. That's a lemon. Christy, you're not going to take off, sweetheart. This is not going to happen today. She's Which, got a little poop on her. Yeah, she always needs to be clean to be honest. Is she uh, as bad as usual? Not that bad. She's not that bad. Oh, he has some yard. Show him your feet. Show him your feet. Nice feet. Oh, next your lady. Okay, everyone passed. Eric's gonna get the eggs for the night. We were getting like 20. I think the most we saw was like 23 eggs a day and they have slowed down to about 14, I believe, is what I'm averaging right now. But I just got five, six, yeah. seven, eight, 20 today though. So they stepped it up again. We've got some fun plans for the day. We're gonna be doing a little bit of rearranging inside the cabin, but first I have to get these buns in the oven because they're ready. And we're also gonna get some beans going. In the meantime, I soaked some of these uh, Whipple beans. That's what they look like now, but this is what they look like before they are soaked or cooked. And they're really gorgeous beans. I don't know if we're gonna do sloppy joes or chili with cornbread. I'm still thinking about it. But we're gonna get those cooking with uh, this moose bone broth. We have some of our tomato sauce and then I also have some like rose hip barbecue sauce too we're gonna to add into there. We're finishing it off with onions. Serranos we had in the freezer and garlic and then a whole bunch of other spices. So the main reason that we are doing some reorganizing in here today is because I would like to start some seeds. So ideally we do not want to start our seeds in the house. Um, we had that situation for years back at the old place and it was pretty chaotic because they're inside for several months um, and I actually think this place is it just seems like a hair smaller. So in the future, we wanna have a seed room and we think we're gonna attach it to the shop. Not sure on that yet, but because this year we wanna get a garden going just a little bit, uh, we are going to make the compromise and start seeds indoors. Our cabin is about 500 square feet, but if you subtract the log walls, which are eight inches, it's actually a lot closer to 450 square feet living space. And with the old place, we had a loft where our bed and our clothes and our actual computer station was. So this is just like a big rectangle and it's a little bit of a different configuration. The bed, as you can tell, is right behind me. And we have pretty much wanted to turn it now for a few months. We just feel like this is a good time to make it happen. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of modifying to make that 
work. And it should fit just perfectly in that orientation. We have a Toyo stove over there that we don't use right now, although we plan to in the future. Um, we've got the crawl space down there. This used to be Bo's little sleeping area and I would step over him. Um, I don't think he really minded it, but we can get to there a little bit easier now. We actually do we actually have to go down there quite a bit. That's the truth. We store a lot of our food down there. That shelf is going to go. It is useless. It doesn't work. It's never been that functional. We're gonna put our seed rack over by that east facing window. And all the furniture in this house is from the previous owner and maybe even the previous owner before that. Sometimes it happens with Alaskan houses uh, if they're cabins. And the table is where Eric does all the computer work. It also functions as a kitchen table. We still have an ice chest as our fridge but this place has a bathroom. And I will tell you right now, that is just something I don't personally ever take for granted, at least not at this point in my life. After living with um, an outdoor bathroom, so an outhouse and an outdoor shower for a few years, Eric doesn't have to fill up the water here. It just runs continuous. We have a continuous supply of hot water and I can't tell you how amazing it is. I never forget it every day when I'm using it or we're able to just hop in the shower. We're absolutely loving this place. We're coming up on a year since we first moved here and got settled in. And I just, I don't know. I think we're both still very, very content here for the time being, but we do have to make some of the space issues work. We don't really have any sort of space for like clothes and you acquire a lot of jackets and boots and just like outerwear, especially because we like to go outside a lot. And no matter how much we've kind of talked about rearranging, I just don't think that it's ever really going to fit in here that well. So that's just gonna be something that we're gonna have to constantly kind of uh, have be a little bit of an issue. So yeah, we're excited to do these changes and we're gonna get started on the bed most likely. For some reason, I really actually feel like it's, they bolted it to the, it feels stuck against the wall. I'm not joking. So there's some lag screws up there that is keeping the uh, beam really snug up against the, up against the back wall. Um, that would explain why it is so difficult to move. It's heavy, but it seemed really weirdly uh, hard to move. So it makes sense now. a little bit messier than we thought they would so we're gonna get cleaned up and get the bed frame and the bed back into position well this is the final look we created a lot more space in here I don't know if you can tell um, but there is a little bit of give and take we used to be able to access three parts underneath the bed and now we can kind of really only get to two so I cannot store as much underneath there we have canned food I've got paperwork um, we have a lot of clothes and it's just a little tricky to get underneath there but in the future, we'll probably have the shop done and we'll be able to keep clothes out there. I'm really liking the way it's looking. I just feel like it feels, feels like it's more tucked into the side of the house. Eric had to cut the posts off so it could sit flush since we turned it against the wall. One side was already cut. And then these ones were uh, extending out really far and we like them to extend out because we use these for laundry. So when we're drying laundry, I still do laundry in our shower stall with our little portable washer and then I will hang it once it's spun dry on these and it dries perfectly in one night. So for the time being, this will work for us. We're just kind of too focused on outdoor projects and I think in the future we may kind of change things around in here, find a better solution or a long-term solution. We're gonna get the seed rack in here as well and then that way we'll be ready to start some seeds in a few days. Oh, sorry, dude. Well, the bread turned out so good that we are going with Sloppy Joe's tonight. So it's going to be kind of like uh, Sloppy Joe's with beans in them. So let's cook up a little bit of moose meat for it.
Doing some gathering on this cold winter day in the dump trailer. That was the first dump with it. This is awesome. So this is about four yards of just pure, nice, frozen. I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds like rocks. Horse manure. And uh, we went and picked up one load locally. And we left the tractor down there. There's probably a good one or two loads left. So that's what we're doing today. Prepping for the garden. We'll see how many times the dump trailer dumps it, right? That's not breakfast. All right, it's safe to say that we have a lot of manure for starting our garden this year, which is really exciting. And um, we actually got some last fall too. And we are getting ready to do some seed sowing today. Eric put these uh, bags of soil back here over 24 hours ago and he's had the diesel heater running. This is the only place we have to heat things up beyond our cabin and it just would take up a lot of space as you can tell. So we're gonna bring them inside and get things mixed up now and grab a few more things while we're out here. They're definitely, a, definitely a defrosted. Look at that guy. This is the only one that's still slightly that's fine. And it's not even frozen, it's just cold. It says it's 80 in here, but I don't feel like oh it's only 73. I think it has moisture in it. It's probably frozen. This is gonna be our seed mixture. You can tell that we combined quite a few bags to get to this point. And usually Eric and I like to make our own. Um, from our own garden soil. We'll put it aside in the fall months, but we didn't have the opportunity to do that up here yet. So hopefully we'll do that in the future. And I'm pretty excited about this. It's a really nice fluffy mix with some fertilizers and other um, amendments like compost. We're gonna be putting them in some of the seed trays I have behind me so we can actually get started here. It's almost the end of February, so we are technically a little bit late on starting some of our seeds today, but it's better late than ever, right, as they say. And Eric and I are now in zone one, so one of the coldest zones you can try to garden in, but people can do it successfully. And that is really referred to, the hardiness zone is like your perennials, so how cold do you get in the winter? Um, where we previously lived, I think it was zone three, to zone four. So just a little bit warmer for perennials that you're trying to overwinter. It actually doesn't really have much to do with annual crops like vegetables. I used to start my seeds there in March, early March, and then just kind of stagger things as we went through that spring season. There are definitely some things that benefit from starting earlier than March. So as early as January and February, but you really have to think about if you have you know, space. Do you have the space for all these plants as they grow, as they need to be um, transplanted up? And do you have the place to acclimate them outside? In the past, we had that high tunnel and we were able to put plants out there, start some of our colder crops out there, and then move them out into the outdoor garden. But we don't have that yet. So just kind of like a disclaimer, we're not doing any hot season plants or crops this year. Um, that's just gonna be the case. We can't do peppers, tomatoes, anything that needs to go in a high tunnel because we do not have a high tunnel 
and I don't think we're gonna get one in in the time that we would need it to be ready. I've got two trays filled up so far, and I tend to plant our seeds pretty shallow, so they will sometimes kind of pop up as they're germinating and growing roots. So we wetted the soil down. I packed it in pretty good with some warm water since the soil was cold, and now they're basically, these trays are ready for us to come sprinkle some seeds along. We're doing onion, shallots, leeks, things like that. We're starting celery. Celery is a really long season cool crop that you wanna start early. I don't know why I really like to grow onions from seed, but I just do. We've tried them from sets and bulbs. Economically, the bulbs and the, the seeds are the cheapest. The bulbs do work really well, but I can just pick a lot more variety. And this is actually one of my seed cases right here. It's very nicely organized. I just recently went through it. It usually stays outside in the cooler so to speak. And I try to have it kind of organized by how I'm planting things. So like this whole side is all warm season crops or things that get planted a little bit. Some of them get planted a little bit later. Some of them actually get planted a little bit earlier, but they're all hot crops. So I'm not even gonna be touching those this year. And we've got root crops. I have celery, the onions there. Then I have herbs, peas, and like greens and brassicas in this little row right here. So right up front, <laughs> These are actually predominantly all onions and shallots um, and that's why I like seeds because I get that really cool um, variety. And you can probably tell I do not favor any certain brands or seed companies. Where we previously lived when we first developed our love for gardening was actually Cottage Grove, Oregon. And that is where um, Territorial Seed Company is based. So we kind of always bought their seeds to begin with. And I still love that company. But since then I've just branched out and I I've never really had an issue with a seed company. They all seem to germinate great. Um, if you like like hybrids, it's certain companies are better for that. We tend to not save a lot of our seeds because of our short season. It's usually well under 90 days. So I personally do actually like hybrids. They tend to grow um, like with really good vigor and I just feel like they're good for our climate. You may know that we already took a whole year off gardening. So this is really, uh, this is really exciting and we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna start opening up packets and sowing some seeds. I'm also getting started on some herbs, some of the slower growing ones, like think woodsy, sage, oregano, thyme, and just a few other various things. I'm starting mints, and mints, honestly, usually a very aggressive plant, and it usually does overwinter in Alaska. I haven't quite found that to be true. So like peppermint, chocolate mint, and spearmint, I think those ones work really well here, but they never got to the point where they were aggressive at our old property. So I don't know if I'm gonna maybe buy some like actual plants and see if they'll take off here. I'm also doing some lemon balm and catnip, and then I've got some rhubarb going too. At this point in my life, I don't have enough rhubarb. Um, we have some plants that we need to dig up at our old place, but we only have a few there, and I really wanna have like a huge rhubarb patch. Some of these seeds are tiny, so the light is helpful for me, and I have to label as I go, otherwise I will not see them or I will get confused. I usually put quite a few seeds into each little cell, and what I will do as they grow or germinate is I will just nip them or thin them out that way. Teeny tiny. We're filling up the seed rack quite nicely. And I have just a few little heat mats. I think I only have two actually. Um, but I have found, even though we keep our house pretty warm, like in the 80s, um, it, is, it is helpful to have the little heat mats underneath them. It will help your germination be quicker. And something I love are these. And these are just these little clear plastic, um, kind of makes like a mini greenhouse. And it keeps it steamy and moist and again, warm. So you just really increase that germination. You, you have usually a higher rate and they also come up 
faster, which is great for everyone. I went ahead and put a little bit of soil on top of each of the cells and I've watered them again. I tend to have like our seeds float up because I don't put them in that deep. So these all look good. This is a east facing window. At our old place, we actually had a south facing window where these plants could germinate. We are gonna add some lights, but they do get quite a bit from the window itself, especially if they're in this range. Let's get started on some of the other stuff that I have to take care of today. I am pretty freaking excited about this. We are cold stratifying some lavender and rosemary. Those herbs along with sage are probably my top three. They just have a very aromatic scent to them. And unfortunately they just don't overwinter here in Alaska. It's just too dang cold. So I haven't actually grown these for a while. Um, sometimes I'll pick up a plant at the store and just grow it annually and then have to harvest it of course um, before winter comes along but we're cold stratifying them and I'm gonna be growing them again because we have intentions to put in like a permanent seed starting room and I think that I could probably overwinter them in there, which is really cool. And if you're not familiar with cold stratifying, really the simplest way to think of it is you are subjecting the seed to what they would experience out there in the wild. They go through like a certain cold or chill hours, just like the natural elements. You can think of it like that. Lavender is one that really needs it. I don't think rosemary is as particular, but we're still doing it anyways. I'm to moisten these, label them, put them in little Ziploc bags and put them, I'm probably gonna put them outside, but you can also put them in a fridge and you wanna do that for like at least a month before you try to germinate them and you will be much more successful doing that. I forgot to mention that I also keep, I'm keeping a little list of what I'm planting and when or what I'm sowing and when. Um, I had an old one of these, but since we're in a new climate, I'm gonna try to kind of make a new one. And this is a ginger plant that we picked up. It's been a few months. It's been, it's been at least three months. So what I mean is we picked up some ginger at the store and it was organic. So it actually started to sprout on its own and I wanted to, go ahead and try to grow it. We have tried to grow ginger and turmeric in the past. It's a little bit tricky. We used to be in zone eight and these are very like tropical plants. So warm, moist, think like jungle. We're gonna take this apart. I wanna see how the roots looking. It's really young. This is pretty leggy because we didn't get very much light this winter and I'm probably gonna prune it. I've never had to actually divide. The rhizome is what it's called. So it has this little tuber, um, it's called a rhizome and then it has roots. So let's dump her out. Oh, she's ready to be planted up. So there is the original rhizome in there and it's grown a lot because this was only a fraction of a ginger plant. Um, it kind of broke off or we cut it off. This is all the new growth. So they grow by these new growing points or nodes. They'll send out little shoots and eventually it kind of like multiplies down there underneath the ground and you divide them when they get big enough. Um, she's not big enough to, to do much with. My main concern is that this is so leggy and I don't think it's healthy growth. Someone out there, if you can chime in and tell me what your opinion is, but I'm probably gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna actually prune this stem right here and just hope nothing happens bad. And we're gonna repot this up in a bigger pot to give it more space to grow. And hopefully as we come into summer, you know, she'll get um, all the light that she needs and maybe we'll be harvesting some ginger in the fall. That'd be pretty cool, right? She's probably loving this new home. So this is actually 50% compost horse manure and 50% our native soil, which is really exciting because that is what we are going to be using this year for growing the garden. Since we're gonna have the lights going, I want to start on some fodder for the chickens. And that is, I think, just a fancy word for basically sprouting um, some grain for livestock. And we are using whole barley, it's Alaska barley. And we've done this before, it works really well. We're going to soak the seed overnight in this bucket and then I'm gonna put it back into this tray and keep an eye on it. You basically wanna water it 
Um, usually once a day, it has little holes in the bottom of the tray, so I'll water it by the sink, and then I will put it back underneath the lights, and it will grow little shoots, and the chickens will get to eat it in about a week. We're getting even fancier. We are trying microgreens for the first time. And this is basically just like sprouting seeds. So we really like to sprout seeds. You let them go a lot longer. And I believe what you do is you actually um, come along and snip the leaves of the plant. I don't think it's the actual like true leaf. It's just the first little ones that come out and you eat them, you enjoy them that way. So we're gonna try them. We're gonna just sprinkle them in this Seed tray I have here with soil. I'm gonna water it, add a little bit more soil on top, and then I will also be putting this onto the lights. And speaking of that, we're going to switch to Eric showing you because I am not the electrician. And here's the kicker, neither is he. <laughs> so I really don't know how to do this. Up in Fairbanks last week, we found a new electrical store up there called Brown's Electric, and they had these really cool lights that we're gonna use as grow lights and we still have our old grow lights, but they're back at our old place and it's a far drive. So we got a few new ones and these are LED shop lights, they call them. They're kind of like a tube light. I believe they draw about 42 watts for this whole little package. And these were pretty cheap. These were $35 each. And a cool thing about them is they are called linkable. So we'll plug this one in, the lamp will work. And then on this side, you have another plug, I don't know if you can see that right there, and we can plug the next light into that one, and then so on and so forth, and I think you could do like four or five of them together, so let's, uh, let's get some lights in. I don't think we need them quite yet, but we'll need them very soon. Look it again, something like that. So looking at the box, it looks like these lights put out 4,200 lumens. Let's see what they look like. Boom, those are bright. Those are way bright. Way bright. Awesome little setup and our old lights, we actually picked those up used. It was from like a commercial grow operation of some sort and they were selling the lights for like five bucks each. So we picked up 12 of them. They're like heavy duty, they're waterproof. So you can like water on them and everything. These ones probably aren't waterproof. So we have to be a little more careful, but I'm gonna put another section in here. So she'll have this ready to go. And I'm gonna enjoy the extra light in our cabin. Our cabin is pretty dark. So it's gonna be nice having these going. So I guess we didn't realize how often we were gonna be using the hatch on this crawl space. And since we have moved the bed out of the way or over there, there's a little more room, but it's really heavy to get that lid off there. It's got two thick pieces of plywood. I think it's like a inch and five eighths altogether. So what we're gonna do is make it a little easier to get down here. Even Arrow will be able to do it. And we're gonna to try to put these hydraulic struts in there. This is something you would find like on a camper shell of a truck and these are 100 pound struts each. So, I mean, look at this. It is extremely, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so really powerful. I don't think they're gonna have a problem uh, lifting up that door at all. So we're gonna put the door on a hinge on this side and then we'll put the struts in here somewhere. But I think the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna screw these hinges on here and I'll have Arrow help me with the door and we'll try to get the, the hinges lined up and see if we can get it to actually fit in there. Watch out, man. Hey, that's pretty good. That is so cool. It's gonna push up too high that way, huh? Do you wanna come down a little? I'll tell yeah. you when to stop. Keep coming down. And keep going. Oh, it does lower down. Is keep it gonna going. clear? Keep going. Is your head okay in case it goes all the way? We got it in. It works too good. So we're gonna have to order different struts. <laughs> I went way overkill on those. So that's 100 pounds on each one. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do like 40 pounds on each one because it's like, you really gotta <laughs> push it down to get it to go. Once it goes, it goes though, like from there. And then when it's going up, I'm like, I gotta like hold on to it because it's so, so powerful. I'm like gonna fling it off the hinges or something. I guess I'll just order some and we'll swap them out. But pretty cool, it'll stay up for us and we can go down there. We can do all our stuff. Like I gotta grab my tools, keep a lot of our food and stuff down here. Like I said, we've been going down here like uh, like every day. And then we'll come up, 
close it. Yeah, that's just way too. But it looks great, honey. Way too hard. It is too hard. Okay, that's a wheat. Just double check the names. Okay, I got, oh gosh. Okay, pretty neat. We picked up our Azure or Azure order um, here in Fairbanks. We made a quick supply run and mainly it was for this. We have ordered twice from them. This is the drop site. The last time I ordered was June. So pretty exciting stuff. We got everything. Just had to pick through and find our name. And I think we're going to do a few more errands and then head home. Okay. Good job. We made it back with our Azure order. As you can tell, we've got it all laid out here on the table. We've yet to put it away. Um, I was snacking on some banana chips. If you are not familiar with Azure at all, they are a food distributor in Oregon and they kind of uh, focus on natural, organic foods like that. And I learned about them a few years back. It wasn't really something that like economically made sense and I'm pretty economical when it comes to food. But as our prices have continued to increase here in Alaska, as I'm sure they have everywhere else, it just seems a little more practical now to get some stuff from them. I predominantly get a lot of like grains or beans or things like that, a lot of dry uh, goods. You have to pay a small fee of the poundage that you get for shipping. And it depends upon if it's like a dry good or if it's um, a refrigerated good or a frozen good. So we just stay away usually from all of that. We do have a few things in here that had to be chilled. We bought some cheese and I guess the syrups, they had to make sure that those didn't freeze on the way over here. So I actually got different things this time around than my last order. I feel like we'll probably only place an order with them one to two times a year, but we've got some cornmeal. I needed some more corn masa, and I am trying some semolina flour for making more pasta because we pretty much flew through our pasta. And I got a huge bag of these coconut chips. I love coconut chips, and these ones are toasted. Usually we buy them untoasted, but um, this is a very big bag, and it was five pounds. It was extremely affordable. And I also got some coconut cream. Ever since we tried that, pretty much a big fan of it. This is also cheaper than I can pick up at our store here. Something I really love from them is the, the cane sugar and the flour. So I have a bread flour right here. It's the ultra fine kind and I love bread flour. So we bake a lot and I find myself using bread flour almost as much as I pretty much use all purpose flour. So I got the bigger bag. I have another bread flour right there. And when we put our flowers away because these are paper bags so they will absorb moisture if they're not lined with plastic and they're not all lined with plastic like that. Eric and I have a bunch of these little bins. We have even the five gallon ones. These are two gallon and these little screw on tops and I'll label them and this is whole white wheat flour. So I'm going to replenish this and we leave these out in the kitchen because we use them so frequently. Some stuff I just don't have room for in here. So it actually has to stay outside if it's able to be frozen and other things I will put in little jars and we'll keep a smaller amount inside the house. But yeah, I'm really excited about what we got. Some, some stuff is pretty good deal. I feel like I look at it and for what you're getting, um, the quality is very high. I also didn't mention that. Um, now that we've gotten them twice now, it's, it's so, it's pretty high quality food you're getting. Um, I really like it. But with that being said, we know that that can get kind of pricey. So there are some things that I just stray away from because they're a little bit out of my, my budget that I want to spend or shipping them here too. It just doesn't really make much sense. We are going to get this all put away and then we're going to whip up a fantastic lunch. We are going to have some mac and cheese for lunch. Not just any mac and cheese. It's going to have three different cheeses and it's also going to have some thinly sliced moose meat. So we have some of the cheese wheel that we bought a while ago. This is all that's left. So I'm going to use all of that, we have some blue cheese, and then we also have this mozzarella that we picked up. Um, I didn't mention it before, but they're kind of cool, the Azure to order from if you do like bulk food shopping. Uh, we are going to try to eat through this as fast as we can, but we will probably also end up freezing a little bit too. Um, mustard, mustard in there too, just a little bit.
Well, these look absolutely amazing. That is some sourdough garlic bread. Well, it's actually just sourdough bread with some tomb on it. We're gonna let them cool down for a little bit and I will show you some of our sprouts in the last few days that have popped up.